we're gonna be working a little bit with the solar plexus chakra <laughs> which is in the solar plexus area so this is the center of your power and for today's class i will be doing a couple of readings from the book eastern eastern body western mind i always get it mixed up i think the eastern body western mind in the the section of the book that speaks about power and i thought it was very interesting how we look at it usually in um kind of a dual way but uh, we'll hear more about it when i read these excerpts that i have selected for you and we are going to start by breathing like we always do but we're going to breathe sitting today instead of shavasana so take a comfortable sitting seated position so either cross-legged if that's comfortable for you or you can sit on your heels in seta whichever works best and your hands can just rest on your thighs with the palms up if you prefer that and we can begin to close the eyes and allow the breath to come down so it's the middle of the day it's Friday, we've been working, we've been doing things. And sometimes we reach this yoga time and the mind is still racing and we're still caught up with whatever it is that we were doing before. So we take a moment first to focus just on the breath and to let go of everything else that's going on for almost one hour we will make space just for the yoga practice one hour for about 45 minutes and we know that whatever it is that we were doing it's still going to be there later waiting so there's no need for us to continue worrying about that or trying to figure it out. Take some distance, leave the thoughts, and other activity outside of the room, and watch the breath flow in. Maybe feel the air as it goes in your nostrils and the belly expands and exhale and the belly gently falls in and we feel the air again exiting through the nostrils a little warmer I'm going to see if I can play some music for you guys. I hope that you can hear the music and that you can still hear me clearly. Not if you can. Good. You might be a bit quiet when you move back. Okay. okay. Now it's okay. Okay. Thanks. Now we're going to try to do alternate nostril breathing without actually covering the nostrils with our fingers. So it's more of a visualization. It may not be actually physically happening. 
but let's first take an exhale and we exhale through both nostrils and on your next inhale feel the air coming in through the left nostril all the way up crossing over the bridge of your nose and maybe coming out the right nostril and then inhaling through the right feel the air cross over the bridge of the nose exhaling through the left and let's maintain this visualization for a few more breaths and do not worry about whether it's happening physically or not just direct your attention almost as if you were tracing the breath gently with your finger. Follow it without expectation. Just let it flow from left to right, from right to left. Breathing naturally, we will come to sit on the heels. So if you were sitting cross leg, we'll come to sit on the heels and we will take a child pose. Sitting on the heels, folding forward, extending the arms in front of you. And we'll take a side stretch. So let's walk the hands to the left side of your body. As far as we can find the edge, find the resistance and the stretch in the right side of your body and relax here. If you'd like to use a pillow under your forehead or for support, you can add a prop. Otherwise, just release onto the floor and release any extra effort that we may be doing to stay in the pose. So if you feel like you're pulling too hard on that right arm, maybe let it come back a little bit so you can truly relax into the pose. Follow the breath. Breathing in. And breathing out. Find the surrender into this pose. And we'll start to think a little bit about power with a few questions. In the book we read, what is power? Where do we get it? How do we use it? Why do we need it? How do we avoid its unbalanced duality of victimization and abuse, aggression and passivity, dominance and submission? Where do we find our own empowerment without diminishing that of others? How do we reclaim with full responsibility, enthusiasm, and pride our innate right to act free from inhibition and shame the popular model of power that exists in today's world 
is one that can be described as power over, based on struggle and opposition between dualities, where one side eventually wins over the other side. In the inner world, the struggle continues. We think power is gained by fighting our inferior parts with the strength of our superior parts. If the right side wins, then we have a sense of power. If we lose, we feel powerless. We are asked to exert mind over matter, to prove our strength by dominating our basic instincts, suppressing the raw energy of the core self which is the psychic source of our power. Struggle itself becomes the focus of our life force. Gently pressing on the hands, let's walk over to the right side this time, finding more or less the same amount of stretch on the left side of the body. And maybe thinking a little bit about the concept of power, the idea of achieving of reaching even deeper, perhaps in a yoga pose. Is that something that we are trying to prove to ourselves? Is that the validation of our power or of, we, of what we can do, of what makes us strong? Or is it there a value in surrendering? Can we find power also in surrendering? Can we find that idea of coming back to our core self of letting go of the need to dominate or to stand superior. Can that be power as well? Relax your shoulders. And allow the body to open gradually. With every exhale, melting just a little deeper. Let's walk the hands back to the center again and bringing them a little closer. Let's press down into all fours. 
Hey Mark, welcome. And maybe walk a little bit back on our mat. So we have space in front. We'll take a couple of very gentle cat and cows. So pressing on the mat, inhale and open the heart. No need to push yourself very deep. And exhale, cat, lifting the spine towards the navel. Just bring in some movement to the upper back. Inhale. And on the next inhale, walk the hands forward, keep the hips above the knees and lower the forehead onto the mat. If you like, you can use a cushion or a pillow under the forehead or even under your chest. So if you prefer, you can just use some support so that we can stay here for a while without exercising too much force. As we continue to breathe in place, especially in a pose like this, you may find that your body gently melts deeper onto the mat and for some people it can be a bit taxing on the arms so if you ever feel like your hands or your arms are going numb or you feel pins and needles you can take a step back use some more support or even come out of the pose usually any tingling sensation or pins and needles are signs of a nerve being pinched. Breathing deeply here. see if we can direct our attention to the abdomen so with the inhale really feel your belly it may be a bit challenging in this pose but just let's direct our awareness to the area Welcome back, Gabby, and welcome somebody whose name I cannot read. And know that if at any point it becomes too much, we can always come out of the pool. Relax your legs. And for the last few breaths, if you feel like your body is open and receptive, you may drop your chest and chin to the mat. You can also choose to stay on your forehead. There's no need to go deeper.
resting on the hands. Slowly come back up. Passing through all fours. And let's sit down on the heels into a brief child pose again. Your knees can be together or slightly apart, your choice. And if you need to release your shoulders, you can extend your arms by the sides of the body so your hands come next to your feet. Allow the breath to flow naturally at all times. And use the breath as your anchor for this moment. See if you can take a step back and watch yourself breathing and watch any thoughts that arise without engaging with them so the mind may start different conversations sometimes we follow a thought and kind of forget where we are. If that happens, it's okay. We come back to the breath. We come back to our center. And direct our awareness to the abdominal area the solar plexus. Feel the breath in the body. Let's bring the hands on the mat in front of us. Come into all fours. And then let's come to sitting. So let's bring the soles of the feet together in front of us first as if we were going to do a butterfly pose. We're going to do something else, but just so we can all start together. And then let's take the left leg and swing it over to the side. So the left knee is more or less in line with the hip. And we can also pull the right leg a little bit more in front of us. So we have a couple of 90 degree angles made with our legs. Yes. So from here, we will twist to the right, towards the right leg. Now you have a choice to stay here, sitting upright. If this is enough, we are externally rotating the right hip and internally rotating that left leg. If you are comfortable here, you can choose to fold to the right. And this is a great place to put a cushion to hold on to. So you can even elevate your body a little bit and simply sit here using your props. 
you may feel it in the hips you may also feel a very gentle twist if you want to lay down all the way on your prop or on the mat you can also do that and if you like you can look over to the right shoulder to complete the twist you can also start a little higher and just allow your body to get deeper into it and maybe in a few breaths you will feel like laying a little lower stay with the breath relax the shoulders and the legs and find that point of surrender which doesn't mean that we are giving our power over sometimes surrender simply means learning to be comfortable with that which is uncomfortable understanding that it will pass and we don't have to control it and actually by letting an uncomfortable situation affect us by falling into the trap of trying to control it or of becoming upset by it we are not holding power over it we are letting it hold power over us and reading a few more a, a little bit more from the book power is not created from staying safe power comes from the willingness to leave the world of safety and move forward into the unknown as we meet challenge it strengthens us by forcing us to grow power like a muscle will not increase by doing nothing so we can reflect about what then is it that we can do if we can change a situation but at the same time becoming too involved or upset by it then we're not holding power either can we surrender into it can we ride it to a resolution Breathe deeply into the abdomen even though it can be a bit uncomfortable sometimes to breathe in a twist let's explore how that feels Pressing on the hands, come into an upright position and let's extend 
the left leg out. Now, depending on how deep you can go, you may again need a prop. You can either place your left elbow on the mat outside of your leg, or you can grab a pillow, a book, and place that next to your leg and your elbow on top of that so you have some elevation. And you can use your left hand to support your head. You can bring your right arm overhead and then relax it. Or you can bring the right arm behind your back if that feels better. Let's just keep the chest open regardless of which position we are choosing to use. So it's a gentle stretch to the right side of the body. You can also change what you're doing with your right arm depending on how it feels. behind your back. Breathe deeply here. the shoulders and the neck. Allow the breath to flow. And be curious about any sensations that arise. You may ask yourself, what am I feeling? Where am I feeling it? And then, how am I experiencing it? Does it make me uncomfortable? Does it make me leave the pose? or seek distraction thinking about something else? Does it make me fidget? And why? Slowly release the pose, coming up, releasing the right arm, sitting upright. And you can move your prop to the side. And keeping the left leg straight, bring the right leg to cross over the left. So your right knee is on top of the left knee. If there's a big gap between your left knee and right knee, you can also add a cushion or a pillow in between your knees for support. And we'll place the right hand behind the body, the left hand 
outside of the right thigh and use that resistance to take a gentle twist. No need to push yourself into a very deep twist like perhaps we would do on a Hatha Yoga class. Very short, we will not stay here for long. more breaths and at the end of your third exhale release and we will take the other side so let's bring the soles of the feet together again and then swing the right leg open to the side maybe get your props if you're using any bring the left foot a little bit more in line with the right knee get your pillows next to your hips if necessary twist to your left and we can stay here or fold deeper onto the pillow or on the floor and if you're comfortable you can lay down all the way and look over your left shoulder or you can do that later as your body settles coming back to the breath let the hips be heavy and from that heaviness you twist you grow long and you release completely onto your prop or the floor relax the shoulders Relax your face, relax the jaw, Breathing into the abdominal area. Allowing the body to settle in the pose. Maybe think of it as, not as your body taking the pose, but as the pose expressing itself through your body.
pressing down through the hands gently. Let's come up and extend now the right leg to the side. And if we were using a pillow or a prop on the other side, let's place it next to the right leg. So we do the same thing. And let's place the right elbow on the right on that pillow or on the floor if that's comfortable for you support the head and we can bring the left arm overhead and relax or we can bring the left hand behind the back keeping the chest open finding a very gentle elongation through the left side of the body and you may also feel a stretch in the right leg. Release coming back to the breath. Checking for tensions. And then letting the pose be. There's no perfect pose to achieve. No shape that we should be making perfect. And what does power become when it's stripped of that reference? Feel the breath in the belly. And let's slowly and gently push our way up. Remove any props that we're using to the side and keeping the right leg straight, cross the left knee over the right knee. So just like we did before, we will take a gentle twist. And if there is a big gap between the knees, we can add a cushion, left hand behind the body, right hand, right arm against that left thigh spine straighten, gentle twist. No need to push too deep, just enough for the spine 
to feel the twist. Deep breaths, relax the shoulders. And watch the breath closely. How does the twist affect your inhales and exhales? And how do we deepen them? Three more breaths. And on your third exhale, let's gently release. And if you have a pillow or a rolled up blanket or something like that, let's put it somewhere close to the bottom of the mat. We will lay down in Shavasana and this will be under our knees. So somewhere where you think your knees will fall, we can always adjust later. Lay on your back. And let's give a hug to the knees, hugging them to the chest. Relax the shoulders. And as we release the legs, again, if you're using a prop, make any adjustments to make sure that your knees are supported. And you may notice that by doing this, your lower back is more grounded on the mat than the usual. Usually, when the knees are not supported because of the natural curve of the spine, your lower back will be off the mat. When your knees are supported, your whole spine will also be supported. The arms can fall open to the sides. In your Shavasana, or you can keep the hands on the abdomen so that you continue to physically feel the breath come and go. And we'll stay here for a couple minutes. And we close this topic of power with the following words. Power is the expression of the sacred in its evolutionary unfolding. Power is the awesome presence of the divine. Power is the mystery, the unknown the confrontation with the other. Power is the transition from the past to the future in order to escape the narrow traps of personal limitation and approach the magnificent expanse of totality, we must reclaim our power. Power is the ability to determine our own destiny. Only in a path of uniqueness can the vital energy uncoil 
and pierce the regions of the unknown. Only with power can we move aside the obstacles that keep us imprisoned, enslaved and unconscious. Slowly begin to bring awareness back inside the body. Wiggle your fingers and toes. Bring the feet together, raise the arms above the head, interlace the fingers, give yourself a nice stretch. And exhale, release, roll to the right side on your mat. And using the hands for support, gently come to a seated position and kindly unmute yourselves. <laughs> Everybody, please unmute yourselves. If you're already unmuted, that's good. We will do one round of a breath that is called Brahmari Pranayama, the peace breath. And um, you can choose to use your hands or not, it looks a little funny. So your thumb will cover your ears, the ear hole, and the index finger covers your eyes, the middle finger covers your nose, and the ring finger and little finger are around your mouth. So basically we are closing all our senses and we take one breath through the nose and when we exhale, we are going to make a humming sound. Like, mm, with your whole exhale until it finishes. It doesn't matter who finishes, who finishes first. So that's why I wanted you guys to unmute yourself. It's a very calming, very soothing sound. And you can choose whether to use the hands or not. It looks a little funky, so. We'll all do it together, with the hands or not. Inhale. Gently open your eyes, hands to heart. Thank you for practicing with me. Okay, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. And uh, this Brahmari Pranayama you can do anytime whenever you need to calm the mind. Um, it's almost equivalent to chanting Om, but not everybody is comfortable with that. But it's always a little bit different when you're just humming. Just, um, it usually works also when you're sick. Have you ever been sick with a fever and you're laying down and you're making a sound like mm, Does it ever happen to anybody? Yeah? It's natural. It, it comes out and my husband always tells me to shut up because when I get sick, all I do is lay, lay under the covers and I make that sound mm, mm. And it's almost innate. It happens to even animals. Like we, we do it. It's it's we soothe ourselves through sound naturally. You probably never even thought about the fact that you were doing this in those situations. But in the same way, you can harness that. You can use it 
with the hands or with no hands, just sitting with your eyes closed and humming your breath out. It's also one technique that you can use, same as deep breaths. Before a meeting that makes you nervous kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. I hope that you enjoyed, that you'll have a good weekend. Nice Halloween. And I'll see you next week.